up guys, Beaker here! Um, I have a 2D motion tracking tutorial in After Effects. And I'm um, just going to be going over the basics and a couple things that you can do. Um, two quick examples that I'm going to show you. Um, we got some kind of name tag on top of this guy's head. And, uh, yeah. And you can even see when he moves, you know, it follows with his head. So that's kind of cool. The other one is some wall text, and um, yeah, pretty simple. And um, this is all inside of After Effects, so no Buju. And of course, Buju would be, you know, better because you can place it anywhere. But this is a uh, pretty basic tracking. So let's go straight into it. So the first example, drop it into a new comp. We got this. All right. So whenever you want a motion track. Um, you want to have this on full, so we get some, uh, good quality. And, um, we're going to go to Window Tracker, if it's not already up, and we get this little tracker window. So, we'll double click on our footage, get it in a little layer viewer. We're going to go to Track Motion. Now, we can either track Position, Position Rotation, Position Scale, or any combination of those. But in this case, we're only going to track the Position. So we get this little box thingy. Now each little box represents um, something different. This outer box represents the search area. So if it's really tiny, it's only going to search, you know, in that box for the next frame. If it's really large, it's going to search everywhere. Now that's not necessarily good because if it notice anything um, similar to the smaller boxes, this is like the actual analyzing zone. You want to think about it that way. If if I have it like this, it's going to be searching for a gray square in inside of this search area, so it can pick anything in here. So this setup right here would not be a good track. So it's a little bit of trial and error, but you got to be careful of uh, the size of your boxes and the search area and the actual analyzing zone, as I call it. Anyways, so I kind of want to just track his head. So I'll just place this on his head, right? And uh, I'll scale this down to just about the size of his head. Just so, you know, I don't... If I get his whole body... Because this is rotating, if I get his whole body, it won't really match up perfectly. So I'm just going to kind of get his head maybe just a little bit bigger. And then the search area uh, doesn't need to be too bad, too big. And um, I should have started at the first frame. All right, so... Of course, you can start at any frame, and you can just track forwards and then backwards. But first frame is good, and we'll just click Analyze Forward and let it do its stuff. And um, it's not going to be, you know, perfect, but it'll be decent enough just to get away with it. Um, it's going pretty slow. What the hell? Hmm, interesting. Well, I guess I'll just kind of let it sit. Um... Uh, maybe I'll just let it fast forward, so I guess I'll see you in a bit. Alright, I'm back. So, it's starting to get just a little bit off. Um, I'm going to let it go for just another second or so. Uh, not too long. But, um, another thing I want to mention is the larger your search area, which is the larger box, the larger that is, the slower the track is going to be, because it's going to be searching a lot of pixels and trying to match it up and, um, you know, line it up and stuff. But, um, for right now, that's, that's probably good enough, so just go ahead and click stop. And whenever you do motion tracking, you always want to make a null object, because this is going to be our, like, tracking holder. So we're going to go to edit target, make sure the null is selected, OK and then apply X and Y. So now we have a null object essentially stuck to his head. And what we can do is just type in some text here and say, you know, uh, what's up guys? Baker here. Baker's tuts. Yeah, so you can place it anywhere you want, maybe over here, and then just parent it to the null object. So it'll move with the null object like that. And what's cool about the parenting is you can take this text, slide it on top, maybe, and it's still motion tracked. Maybe you want it below, it's still motion tracked. I mean, it doesn't look, 
you know, good or anything, but you can, the, th the thing about parenting is, you know, you can move this whenever you want to adjust it, and it will still, you know, move around. So that's pretty cool. That's just a decent little, uh, I like the name tag idea. Uh, decent little uh, motion track for rotating. Now if you have some kind of wall, so here's the other cinematic. We have a wall here, and uh, I just want to track this wall. So we'll go to full, double click, and go to tracker, track motion. And this is, again, since it's a simple uh, camera movement, it's just going to be the position that we are tracking. Position, and I'm going to bring this down. Oops. To, uh, I'll try, where is it? This corner. And uh, scale this down, maybe. Scale this one down. Now, normally when you have shaky footage or fast footage, this needs to be really big, but uh, down here would be good. Maybe this track will be a little bit faster. Oh, oh, there it goes. Look at that. And uh, it'll go off the screen, so we're going to have to kind of fix that. So, um, right before it goes off, I'm going to click stop. So, just keep on going, keep on going. Jump, jump, and stop before it gets off the page. All right, so again, we'll make a new null object, and this will hold our data. So edit target, null, OK, apply, X and Y, boom. So now we have this null kind of stuck on the wall. Now it stops being tracked. So if you want to have text right here, like, um, the wall text, right? And let's say we just have it, you know, right here or something. You know, could change the transfer mode, overlay, that doesn't look good, never mind. You know, whatever, whatever you're doing. Um, parent it to the null. So it moves with the wall and all, but then it stops. So what we can do is actually kind of cheat the system. We push U and find our position on the null. Zoom in here. And here's our last keyframe, right? Well, what we can do is just uh, move forward and then uh, just slide the null over, kind of fake it. Since this is pretty flat, this is uh, pretty easy to kind of cheat. But if you kind of notice the uh, the text on the wall, it's a little bit sliding. So this last keyframe needs to be scooted over more. And then so just kind of check it over and over. Probably needs to be around here. So right there, see that? Our extra keyframe makes it look like it's uh, motion tracked. You can probably go a little bit further if you need it to. So something like that. But I mean, if it gets off the page, you can go ahead and just kind of fake it a little bit if you can. And uh, again, you know, maybe move the wall text down here. And it's still motion tracked. Maybe up here. That works too. You can even have it floating over here. Floating. But just keep in mind it gets off over here. So a uh, little basics of motion tracking. Uh, I kind of wish I had a rotation um, example for you, but in Call of Duty clips you can't really rotate your camera sideways. But if your footage, if you're dealing with real footage or anything, just click rotation and you'll get two trackers and you have to track two points and then it'll just, you know, it'll just be like normal. So that's about it. Uh, quick examples. Um, hope you enjoyed this 2D motion tracking in After Effects. And uh, go ahead and like and comment and uh, possibly a favorite and stuff. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah. But um, until then, I will see you next time. Peace.